Good afternoon and welcome to Cowkine TV. James Preston with you for the early trade show. It's great to have your company here in Cowkine from our Sydney studios. Well, the market sentiment seemed to be improving amid better than expected jobless claims data and quarterly GDP growth rate coming out of the US. At the same time, market players remain jittery amid growing virus concerns and restrictions in Victoria. So on that note, let us cast an eye over how the market charter is panning out today. Taking cues from positive sentiments in the global markets, the ASX 200 is all charged up today with index gains of around 1% during early trade hours. Overnight on Wall Street there was broadly a green trading session with financial and communication services shares making the most gains. However, the dollar index slipped and Treasury yields inched up amid a series of economic events. According to the U.S. Labor Department, the number of Americans filing new claims for unemployment benefits decreased to 406,000 for the week ending 22nd of May, the lowest since mid-March 2020. As layoffs subsided, the companies were looking for workers to meet the rising demand unleashed by the reopening of the economy. Another report from the Commerce Department on Thursday confirmed economic growth picked up the pace at a 6.4% annualised rate last quarter, owing to the massive fiscal stimulus by the central bank. This was the second fastest GDP growth since the third quarter of 2003. Meanwhile, Senate Republicans have proposed a US $928 billion proposal as a counteroffer to President Biden's US $1.7 trillion infrastructure bill. House Republicans and Democrats have been wrangling over the bill central to President Biden's economic reforms, and it's still unclear whether they will settle their differences by the Memorial Day deadline set for the bill's assent. Let's turn our market attention now to the US inflation data due for Friday and a jump in prices could be seen as prompting the Fed to scale back its easy money policies. Interestingly, within an hour of trading, all 11 sectors were higher today. Materials is the best performing sector, gaining over 2%, followed by the energy sector. Australian energy producers such as Boss Energy, Santos, Beach Energy and Woodside Petroleum are trading with a positive bias today amid oil price uptick. On Thursday, crude oil prices rose around 1% as strong US economic data negated investors' concerns about the potential for a rise in Iranian crude supplies. Brent crude futures rose 9.9% uh, of a percent to close at US 69.46 a barrel while the U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude was up 1% to settle at around U.S. $67 per barrel. Let's move on to the miners' space. The heavyweight Australian miners Rio Tinto, Fortescue Metals and BHP Group are trading in positive territory. On Thursday, Asia's iron ore benchmark rebounded from a more than six-week low, underpinned by easing concerns about a crackdown on speculative trading in commodities by China. Iron ore on China's Dalian Commodity Exchange closed up by 1.1% to 1,046.5 yuan per tonne after earlier falling to 985 yuan per tonne. On the other hand, Australian gold miners such as Gold Resources, Remulus Resources, Silver Lake Resources and DeGray Mining are all trading lower amid softening gold prices. Safe Haven Gold retreated on Thursday, weighed down by the rising Treasury yields. And the upbeat US data that showed a recovery was on track, further added pressure. Spot gold fell 0.24% to US $1,892.16 per ounce, slipping below the key psychological US mark of $1,900. Well, it's time for a very short break on Cowkind TV. Stay tuned as I'll be back in just a moment to share more updates on ASX listed trending stocks and also a new meme stock that is surging thanks to Redditors. At Calkine TV, we'll take you to the heart of the Australian equity market. We'll bring you breakthrough stories that highlight volatility, as well as tailwinds building across the length and breadth of markets. Whether space travel will gain momentum, while economies may gradually open amid vaccine rollouts, our experts will share their timely inputs. 
So join us on this exciting journey of live streaming, financial and stock market news. Calkine TV. Thanks for sticking with us. James with you live from Calkine Studios in beautiful Sydney and you're watching the early trades. Let's cast an eye over the major stock movers of today's trading session. The poultry products producer Ingham's Group is the leading gainer on the ASX 200. In the latest update, the company has stated that its forecast profit for this financial year could surpass current forecasts and has therefore provided a guidance to investors. The company expects statutory net profit to be between $80 and $87 million. According to the company, improved outlook was aided by improvement in general trading conditions with the declining impact of COVID-19 restrictions over the past six months. In the wagering space, Australia's largest gambling company, Tabcorp, has made leaps after Betmakers bid $4 billion on it for its wagering unit. Betmakers Holdings Limited is a wagering technology and data partner for some of the world's most recognised and respected bookmakers and also rights holders. Meanwhile, Betmakers slip just below 13% on the board. Tabcorp said in a statement that the proposal was subject to due diligence, arranging finance, regulatory approvals and obtaining third-party approvals and consents. The update stated that Tabcorp has yet to view the deal on the merits of the proposal and will assess it in the context of the previously announced strategic review. Next, an Aussie broadband is seeing its best day in more than three months. Aussie broadband has upgraded its outlook for the financial year of 2021. Earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortisation, excluding IPO costs to the range of 17 to 20 million, up from a prospectus forecast of 12.3 million. And moving on, shareholder registry firm Link Administration has received an over Australian $3 billion offer from private equity giant KKR & Co for majority owned online real estate platform PEXA. Notably, property classifieds operator Domain Holdings Australia also eyes a stake in the prized firm and it says it will join a consortium looking to acquire a 10% stake in PEXA. KKR in its announcement has said it expected to partner with Domain Domain, however, did not name who will comprise the consortium. Earlier this year, we saw Redditors create an artificial surge in the stock of GameShop, and it looks like they've done it yet again. All the details on which new meme stock is sizzling after this short break on Calkine TV. At Calkine TV, we'll take you to the heart of the Australian equity market. We'll bring you breakthrough stories that highlight volatility, as well as tailwinds building across the length and breadth of markets. Whether space travel will gain momentum, while economies may gradually open amid vaccine rollouts, our experts will share their timely inputs. So join us on this exciting journey of live streaming, financial and stock market news. Calkine TV. Thanks for sticking with us on Calkine TV. James Preston taking you through the early trades. And just before we get to the newest meme stock doing the rounds, let's continue our deconstruction of some of the key players today. Whitehaven Coal has emerged as another winner on the ASX 200 ladder. Whitehaven Coal recently welcomed the judgment in the federal court, dismissing proceedings seeking to prevent the federal environment minister, granting an approval for the company's Vickery extension project under the Environmental Protection Biodiversity and Conser Conservation Act. The company sees a continuing role for high quality coal in contributing to global CO2 emissions reduction efforts while simultaneously supporting economic development in our near region. There is strong market demand for the high quality product of the type that Vickery will end up producing. Whitehaven now looks forward to receiving the EPBC approval for the Vickery extension project. Also consumer lending company Latitude Group jumped on an upbeat half yearly outlook. The company expects net profit after tax for the first half of the year to be in the range of 115 to 120 million, 
which is representing a 70 to 80% jump on the previous corresponding period. Well, first it was Dogecoin, then GameStop, and now AMC Entertainment has become the latest meme stock to attract the eye of Redditors. The shares of the American movie theatre chain, AMC Entertainment Holdings Incorporated, surged 47% on Thursday as speculative trading by Reddit-obsessed day traders spiked. However, at the end of the day's trade, it closed to US $26.52 apiece, down 35.58%. With yesterday's spike in prices, the week-to-date returns on shares have still jumped to 120%. The surge happened after a trending post on Reddit's Wall Street Bets chat room on Thursday said AMC rocket ship, while another said I've invested all my savings into AMC, wish me luck guys. The short covering would have helped in the surge in share price. Almost 20% of the company's float shares have been sold short compared to an average of 5% shortage in a typical US stock. These short sellers have lost US $1.3 billion this week due to the rally in stocks. And experts suggest that AMC has taken over GameStop to become the favourite stock on the Wall Street Bets Reddit forum. AMC ended the March quarter with US $1 billion in liquidity, the highest level seen through the company's century-old history. However, the experts suggest that the cash on hand will only keep AMC afloat through to 2022. Does make you wonder what will be the next meme stock and what form it might take. Well, that's all we've got time for on the early trades, but we will have more stock-related updates for you in the coming shows. So please stick with us here on Kaokai TV.